right, good morning, everybody. Welcome. It is day one, BB Adrenaline's coverage of the Triple Crown NIT. The wait is finally over. Uh, we are here, and there's a lot more commotion going on right now than yesterday. Yeah, I would say the moment we walked in the door, it's it's loud. You know, you got whistles, you got gameplay started. Right when we walk in the door, we're seeing Lacey Tinno, we're seeing Hallie Thompson, both two incredible athletes out of Houston Skyline. And we just started the morning off with some really high-level 18s. We got to watch a five in Mintonette. So just some really high-level volleyball right off the bat. And even with the high-level volleyball, you can't forget about everyone's favorite part. This is one of the biggest recruiting events of the weekend. And so there are so many college coaches. I've already been fangirling over them, <laughs> trying to get some pictures with them. But it's just amazing to see all the level of competition in the gym and having so many college coaches just be around to watch this high-level competition. Yeah, and so one thing with the Triple Crown that is unique is their power pool format. So today... Well, they rank them. It's best versus best. They literally mean it. So those power pools, it's great teams going against great teams right away. Yeah, for sure. It's, you know, you've got Muncie versus Houston Skyline. You've got so many top teams playing once against once another and it's just amazing to watch on day one you know a lot of other teams and tournaments don't have this amazing level of competition on the first day so it's super interesting to watch all weekend you know and the other day we talk about the talent and that's a big reason why we're here but every court you walk by you're like oh oh, we got to get her, we got to get her. Every court is filled with high-level players. Yeah, the team's competing. You know, everyone has a star player. Everyone has those top-ranked players. And it's just really, a once, you, once again, a unique tournament to see right from day one you're playing high-level talent. You're going to play the best of the best all weekend long. Yeah, so we have a lot more to come. Uh, we're kicking things off. We have athletes lined up. Uh, they were nervous this morning. Nobody wanted to interview before their first match. But once we settle in, we're going to have tons of athletes stopping by, prospects, some uh, Under Armour award winners stopping by. We're going to have trivia. We're going to have things going on all weekend with our live show. And we're broadcasting the people walking by here in the convention center. So day one, Triple Crown NIT is off and running. And we can't wait for the next three days. First of all, the talent in that gym yesterday was top notch. It was. It was awesome to see all the players, you know, that are already here at the tournament. Yes, Everyone yes. wanted to come to that first camp because obviously they're already in town. So um, it was great to see, you know, some of the players from this area, some from the West Coast, you know, from different clubs yesterday at camp. It was definitely one of our strongest camps that we'll have this year. What I wonder about is how do you guys like find these athletes and bring them to your camps? You know, I think I've never known about the process. So how do you find these top athletes out there and bring them to these camps? Yeah, so it's, it's a combination of a couple of things, right? We come to the tournaments just like today and stop by as many courts as we can. Um, and then also, you know, have the, the good relationship with different club directors and recruiting coordinators there. Um, and, you know, the last thing I would say is a little bit through social media, you know, it's, it's a big thing these days and, um, you know, players reach out with interest and then we review their video and hopefully watch them in person as well. So it's, it's a recruiting process for the camp uh, since it's invite only. And talking with Mike extensively, you wanted to make it an on the court volleyball experience process. Uh, because you're trying to pick the top 24 players in the country, and they have to play volleyball to do that. So talk about that a little bit in your guys' philosophy. Yeah, that's it. That's our number one focus, you know, bringing the best players we can to the gym. The camp itself, it's fun. It's a little bit of a show. It's the new gear that they get and everything. But we want to make sure we are, you know, getting the players there that are the highest um, top talented players that you know are evaluated for the game as well um, so yeah so it's all about volleyball you know we warm them up there is not much dancing and TikTok and stuff like that uh, it's still part of it you know players love to do that but we warm up and then just go through as many drills as many touches as we can it's a short camp so we are trying to be efficient and see their volleyball skills in that short time <laughs> Welcome back.
back, Volleyball Adrenaline. We're here with Finley Kristowiak out of Wave 16 Scott, coming off of a big win against Legacy Volleyball Club in their first match of the day. So kind of tell me, how was the travel? You're traveling across the country, and you know you're playing a top 10 ranked team at 8.30 in the morning. How was that? We kind of just played to get all the jitters out. Next next game will be a lot better, hopefully. Yeah, and then yesterday you had a really fun experience at the UA Next Camp. So what a great opportunity to just once again kind of get some reps in right before a big tournament. And then how was kind of playing against, yeah, some of the best girls in the country, also a big media event. What was that like? Um, it reminded me of a lot of NTDP, just playing with, like, a lot of girls that I knew. And now I can see them all play today and play against them. So, that yeah, it was really fun. And having all the coaches there was a good experience. Talk about your team, and, and Riley, even with you, when we talk about recruiting and rankings and all of that, I mean, even on your team with all the stars, I mean, what's that like? To, I mean, you guys really have to share the spotlight. I mean, yeah, I mean, that makes it a lot more fun to have all of us on one team because it just makes us better in practice and everywhere like we just can push each other to compete it's friendly competition and practice and it just makes it so much more fun so when you come to this event what's different about triple crown than maybe any of the other tournaments that you go to um triple crown is just like there's so many good teams every match is a battle and that just makes it so much fun and yeah it can be a little nerve-wracking but we all have so much trust in each other and trust in our teammates and that's what makes it fun yeah we just try to block everything out and keep calm. Okay. So when you come, like, do you get to see the, the like the West Coast teams very often during the year? Um, not really, only here. Yeah, I mean, you guys really don't need to leave the border, do you, to get great competition? No. What's that saying about Texas? I mean, we're just every every club has a good team, and even like local tournaments are always a battle. Well, don't you always say everything's bigger in Texas? Or is that what everybody says? Yes. yes. All right. That's what, that's what they always tell me anyways. So it sounds like this is your biggest tournament of the year so far. And it's the biggest one of the year so far. So talk about that a little bit. How much do you feel the pressure with all these college coaches walking around? Do you just kind of zone in with your own team? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I mean, I think our team, one of our goals before this trip that we talked about was don't look in the crowd, and if you do, just pretend the coach is someone's dad, like wearing a college hoodie. Like, don't think about the colleges that are out there. Just go out and play your best and play your hardest because that's what we're here to do. We're here to win. And then also just adding on to that, we've all just kind of been like trying to bring each other up, be very uplifting and have a really positive mindset because as Addie said earlier, we haven't played any teams outside of our region yet. So we're just seeing what um, other regions are like and we're just trying to be really positive with each other. I will say every time I watch you two young ladies play, I just love it. Like the smile on your face. And Reese has this swagger on the court. She'll set up like this perfect connection and then do this like, and I know, like, they are on it. How many teams are in the Big Ten? What's your guys' guess? And I'll give you a hint, it's not ten. Hey, no cheating, no cheating. Okay, reveal, 18 and 20. So the correct answer is 18, yes, so with the addition, yes. So good job, you win a free t-shirt. <laughs> All right, so your first question is, how many girls are on a volleyball court at the same time? How many? Wrong. How many girls are on the volleyball court oh, oh, oh. at the same time? 12, okay. <laughs> so what college volleyball team has won four national championships back to back? Oh. Waiting on her. Okay, so we have answer reveal. We have Stanford and Texas. So it's actually Penn State. 
Yeah, so Stanford won three back-to-back -back and Penn State won all four. So thanks for hanging out with us, guys, and answering some questions. Just the environment and, like, just, again, like, the energy of Triple Crown, it just lets you play at your highest level. Yeah, for sure. Okay, and so talking a little bit more about your game, setter, what's your favorite part about being a setter? My favorite part about being a setter, that's a tough question. Um... I mean, I love making my teammates look good. That's my that's my favorite thing, probably, in those big moments. And it's been like three or four back and forth, and then my hitter just crushes the ball, and just being able to support her, that's probably my favorite part. Yeah, and making your teammates look good means you have to be leading them, having great relationships with them. You know, how do you foster those connections as a setter? Yeah, I think that everybody works differently. Um, I like to get to know each of my teammates specifically and how they like to be handled after an error, after a good play. I think that if I can personalize my reaction with my teammates, it helps them. Like, but I don't want to like hype up somebody who needs a breath after an error or something like that. So my favorite way to kind of like get my teammates back in the zone is to know specifically like what they need and what helps them the most. Yeah, for sure. And so now you are about to start your big recruiting journey, your big process. If you could go back to being 12 years old, what would you tell the little girl that put on the jersey for the first time? Be a setter. Because I was <laughs> in the middle at first, and I, I wish I had those years back to train. But um, besides that, just keep working hard. I think the most important thing, obviously, is just, just get in the gym every day. Every day can't be perfect. Every day isn't – you're going to have three practices a week. Two of them will be mediocre, but you just got to get through that. And that's the biggest part for me is just finding a way to – power through like even the bad days and knowing I'm gonna grow from them. And we are joined by literally a couple of the top prospects in the class of 2026, uh, but a couple pretty good kids as well. So Hallie Thompson of what Skyline? Houston Skyline, Skyline yeah. right? <laughs> Henley Anderson of Austin Skyline. All right, join us. Thank you guys. And we've talked a lot, but Talk a little bit first of all, and Henley, we'll start with you. Just talk about Triple Crown and what's different about this tournament. Um, I think it's different about this tournament is like just like all the competition. Everyone comes in from all over the country, and like you see teams that you've never played before. And I think also it's really nerve wracking because of the college coaches. But like I think once the first game's over, it just starts getting like a regular tournament, and you don't think about them anymore. But I also think it's fun because like we see everyone like Houston Skyline and like all of our friends that like we don't see all the time. Are your friends? Oh my God! Oh, it's real. We wanted to build this up as a big rivalry that you guys didn't like each other is what we wanted to do, we but now, like, <laughs> we, we can do yeah. that. Um, it's it's like I remember being like my sister played volleyball, so I remember like watching her and being like, oh my gosh, like this is so crazy. So I think that like I really like when these little girls text me and like, oh my gosh, I look up to you so much. Like that is the biggest compliment because it just makes me feel like a big sister in like a way. It makes me feel like. I am like doing something more than just volleyball, which is what I want to do. Yeah, I agree with that. Like when I see all the little girls like on the court and like you'll get a kill and they're like, oh my gosh, like for anyone on the court, it just like, cause I just like remember when I was younger, like looking up to the big girls and I was like, wow, like I'm never going to be like that. And it's so, like now that like we're that age, <laughs> yeah, sure, it's like really. now that we're that age, it's like real. And it's like now that like we're the older ones, they look up to the, they look up to us. Yeah. Like it used to be like. Okay, we're back with two big Texas stars. You know, we got Taylor Clark and then we got Kiani out of um, Dallas Skyline. So just coming off of a big win for the first game of the day, you know, bright and early morning, you're playing a really high level Mintonet team. So how was that for you guys? And then how did you guys continue to grow through that match as a team? I definitely think at the start, we kind of had our first game like nerves. But I think towards the second set and the third set, we started focusing on the little things like talking, communicating, kind of doing our own jobs and not worrying about, you know, all the outside kind of commotion. And what we really focused on is serve and serve receive because we have the hitting, we have the block. So that's really our focus when we're in high intensity, high pressure situations is just focusing on the simple basics. That's just that I feel like we were just all in our head at first and just worried about what we needed to do. But once we just settled down and knew that all we need to do is get this block, get this touch, and control each ball, we were fine. Taylor, you were talking to me a little bit about 15-13, third set. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of intensity and energy in an early morning match. So how do you and your team 
prepare for these early morning matches? Um, I definitely think we always wake up. We got here very early. We got here at 6.40, even though we reffed first. We kind of always get into the mood, get into that. We wor warm up together. We all have our, like, beats on and playing our music. And we just try to be as a team, be together, so we don't worry about ourselves because then we start to get self-conscious and things like that. But if we just play as a team, I think we all have such strong ability that it works the best. So definitely preparing well in the morning, good breakfast, things like that and staying together as a team uh, before we play. If you don't know this girl, let me tell you, she had a fantastic morning. I was at her court, her entire team was killing it. But this girl at the net, she puts up a crazy block. I want you to tell me a little bit about your game this morning. Um, it's a hard game just because we're from Southern, we're Southern California team, so adjusting. And because really playing at 7.30 is like playing at 5.30. But I think we adjusted really well and did really well this morning as a team. Yeah. She really dominated and I loved it. One of the things that's really exciting about her is she not only plays volleyball, but she plays basketball. Talk to me a little bit about that. Um, I mean, I started playing basketball when I was younger and picked up volleyball a few years ago. So it's nice to like fulfill both my passions at a high level.